Well, welcome. Uh, happy Friday. I hope you're doing well. Um, hey, Donna is in the house. Navala, hello, my members. Awesome. As you can see behind me, I have um, a list of all of the founding members. I am so excited. Um, thank you all for joining me last night. That was um, really great. I was uh, quite surprised by um, uh, the turnout and the excitement and uh, the wonderful response. So uh, that really, um, really touches me. And I'm so grateful that um, so many people uh, are excited about the membership, as excited as I am about the membership. So um, I just can't wait to get started. And uh, as you can see, I have a little ban banner going. So um, I'll be talking about the membership a little bit. Uh, and then we'll do a flip cup, which I think is fun. I'm Time kind of got away from me a little bit. So I'm finishing mixing colors. <laughs> I have um, mostly uh, old colors. These are leftover colors from the last couple demos and pours that I've done. But I was all out of metallic white or iridescent white. So I have to mix up some more because I love this color and it does some amazing things in flip cups and other pours. I just, metallic white, I think um, it loves to blend with these other colors and does, does really cool stuff. So, hey, JC, welcome. Great to see you here. So uh, I'm just mixing up some, <laughs> my last two paints. Hey, Tammy, hey, Annette. Thanks for joining. I am so excited. I'm mixing paint, uh, the last uh, color um, for our flip cup. But uh, I have a list behind me, I mentioned. Those are all my founding members. I think I have, I think we have 26 founding members um, from yesterday, which is amazing. I am so excited. So um, I'm going to talk about that a little bit, and then we'll do a flip cup, a crazy flip cup. Uh, we're going to do one that's kind of similar to the one over here. That was the one that I just, you know, threw a bunch of stuff in there just to see what would happen. So we're going to do a 16 by 20 uh, and similar colors. So it'll for sure be different, but it'll be fun. It'll be fun to see what happens. And I'll show you kind of how I layered that cup for the other one. Um, and so you can kind of see if you want to recreate it. I, I like that painting so much. I think I might do a series of those with, with those similar color palettes um, and just do a series of, of paintings, say, uh, flip cup paintings, just because it's such a cool color palette. I just really love it. So... This one will be close. I'm almost ready to go. Just need to add some water. So, but I uh, hope you had a, a nice Friday. And uh, and I'm just checking comments. If you have any um, uh, questions, of course, uh, feel free to put them in the comments. So, but um, I was having fun today, uh, responding to a bunch of messages that were coming in and uh, working on the membership. And I added a Facebook link uh, to the membership site. So if anyone wants to join the private um, Pouring Studio Facebook group, you can do that now. There's nothing in there yet. <laughs> it's just, there's a like an intro post just to say hi and kind of a couple questions, you know, fun questions. So here we go. This is looking pretty good. I like it. I got to finish up the gold. This is almost ready. This is um, the gold I'm using. This might uh, have to be careful because this is the extreme sheen gold. So it's going to want to go wild, which uh, is going to be cool. So we'll see what happens. But I have to add a little bit of water to the gold. These are the only two colors I didn't have already mixed up. Um, so... But uh, let's see, I got, what do I have here? I've got a uh, black and I've got uh, the aqua green, a couple different blues, uh, pyrrole red, my favorite, a purple, and then kind of a crimson-y color. So we'll throw them all in there and see what, what happens. Hey, Doris, how are you? Thanks for joining us. Um, and I got a question. When you do a, a flip cup, do you need a base coat? Uh, you don't have to have a base coat for a flip cup. Um, I, I normally put one down um, just because 
I find it's just easier to tilt the, pa the paint, but um, you don't need to have one. And maybe we'll try something else uh, instead of a base coat tonight. I'll try something else. Because another thing you can do, uh, which is to kind of run, kind of run a, a base coat kind of around your, your uh, paint puddle, maybe we'll give that a try. I think they call that, uh, you know, adding flow extender. Um, but maybe we'll give that a shot instead of a base coat. So let's see what happens. So, but I do like a base coat though, but you don't have to have it. I know there's a lot of people that don't use it. Um, that looks great to me. Okay. So um, let me show you, uh, let's take a look at the, um, the panel. I'm gonna work on a panel uh, for this one. And this is a new panel that I've made. Um, it's uh, the, still the birch panel. And it's like the eighth inch birch on uh, a um, uh, basswood uh, cradled frame, basswood. And it's gessoed and it's all prepared correctly. But this one, you can see I have put a dado. Uh, there's like a notch on the, the profile and I really kind of like this. I've been messing with this. And the effect you get when it's hanging on the wall, it's kind of floating off of the wall. And so it's kind of a cool effect. Um, so what I do is I, I, I pour over the edge. I pour over this edge. But then this edge, I don't really worry too much about. Um, and then after, after the painting dries, I paint that edge either a color from the painting or black or silver or a solid color, but it looks, it's kind of a really cool accent and it kind of floats off uh, the wall. It's really, I kind of really like it. So I've been messing around with that, uh, with the new panels. So um, I'm gonna put got too much stuff. I've got a keyboard thingy, gotta put that away. Um, but uh, if you just joined us, um, maybe you can see all of the people who have joined my founding members. Um, I am so excited. Thank you all so much for uh, joining the membership. And um, I think we're going to make it awesome. And I can't wait for next week. We're going to really get rolling. So let me uh, flip the camera. And we'll take a look at what we're going to do here. So oh, I got a first of all, let me get rid of this stuff for now. And let me move this out of the way. I think I have to zoom out a little bit. It's a little too close. There we go. That's a little too far. There we go. So that looks good. So I'll show you the colors I have. Uh, this is the, um, I would just mix this up. It's the, uh, Iridescent white. This is the Liquitex iridescent white. I love this color. And I've got the gold, of course. This is the uh, Extreme Sheen gold. It's it's the uh, bottle one, the little bottle, Extreme Sheen. Um, so that one I'll have to be careful with because that one is going to want to, you know, take over. It can take over some stuff. I've got a bunch of black here. And here's a little tip. Um, actually, I'm going to add a little more. This black. I'm making it a tiny bit thinner than the other colors. So we'll see if my uh, idea works. So this is going to be a little different consistency, which I really don't recommend all that often. But for flip cups, you know, anything kind of goes most mostly. But uh, so I'm making this black a little bit thinner than the other paints. And I have an idea behind that. That looks pretty good. OK, so then I have um, some silver here. And I've got uh, the, this aqua green, which I really like. I love this color. I've got a couple blues. And I've got uh, like a crimson. This is a kind of a metallic crimson. And then a red, my favorite pyro red. And a little bit of um, like brilliant purple. And some white, of course. And then these two colors over here are for the, were for the base coat. Just some kind of leftover mixed up paint uh, for a base coat. So uh, we'll see if I, what I want to do with the base coat. 
But um, so, and let me move this off here a minute. And uh, so now we'll we'll layer the cup first. I always kind of like to do that. And I'll talk about um, kind of how I'm doing what how I layer the cup. And let me get rid of these. Okay, so I need 13 ounces of paint. Um, and uh, so this is a 13 ounce cup right here. It's like a big, you know, or it's actually a 16 ounce cup, but I need 13 ounces in there. So, um, and uh, I'm just, I got a couple questions. Yeah, Don is absolutely right. The extreme sheen can be a bully. So we have to, we have to be careful with that one. And Novala's got, she's got it. Lacing, yep, that's my idea, Novala. And, uh, and yeah, JC's like, it's a lot of colors. It sure is. <laughs> it's a, it's a scary amount of colors. Um, cause this is a, you know, a crazy flip cup. So, and, uh, and Dor oh, Doris asked about, um, am I going to sell those panels? I don't, um, have any plans to sell them right now. I make them pretty much just for me. Um, but you never know what the future holds. So, um, but, uh, but, uh, it's, you know, we'll, we'll see. Um, so, and then Annette asks, uh, how I keep the, how do I keep the surface so clean? Like my, my tabletop, this is a, the tabletop is actually a craft paper. And uh, I pretty much just use it when I'm doing videos. Uh, it, it's much nicer for the camera instead of like a white, my regular white freezer paper. So whenever I do a pour, I pour on this uh, uh, craft paper. And then when I'm done, I just kind of fold it up and pull the next batch of paper out. So that's, it's brand, it's like brand new paper. That's kind of how I keep it clean. But it's normally, I just have freezer paper down and that gets messy and I just leave it there for a while. But uh, for videos, you gotta look nice and pretty. So let's get to um, layering some, some paint here. So first of all, I think I'm going to, I got my cup, I'm gonna add a little white right at the beginning. And then actually I'm gonna add a little bit of uh, the, iridescent white, just like that. And then uh, I think I'm gonna add some green, the aqua green, and then maybe some of the purple. I like these two colors kind of next to each other. And then after that, what do I wanna do? Maybe a little of the silver. And then maybe some of the, this is the blue. And now I'm going to take um, the iridescent white and I'm gonna do a high pour. So I'm gonna hold the white up above the cup. And so watch what happens when it hits the paint. It shoots right down to the bottom of the cup. And I like to do that um, with the iridescent white because it causes a lot of blending and mixing and it can create some very cool effects. So now I'm going to, um, what do I want to do next? I'm gonna add some black now. This will be just kind of a normal, it's kind of wanting to go down the side though cause it's thinner. And then I'm gonna take some gold. I'm gonna add a little of the gold. And then on top of that, I'll add maybe some of the uh, copper. And then what do I want next? Then the red, maybe. I'm getting close to my 13 ounces here. And then I'm gonna take and add another high pour of the iridescent. And then just to be dangerous, I'm gonna do a high pour of the gold. And we're almost there. I'm gonna end it with uh, just some black on top. So that's it, that's our cup. And um, we'll see what, what happens. So I'm gonna move this out of the way. That's a lot of paint. And one thing I like is when I do flip cups, I like to do bigger ones because you, get, you have a lot more paint 
so a lot more blending in your cup and um, it makes it can, I think it just creates a lot more interesting effects that can happen when you have a bigger cup and more paint. So I'm going to move this to the side for the moment. And now, so I think I'm going to, um, I'm going to put my base coat down and then I'll show you something else. So um, I have a couple colors here. I'm going to just, I like to use um, just random colors or base coats that aren't um, white or black. These are just leftover paints. So and I like to use kind of random colors and then just spread them out. So I'm going to spread this and I'm going to make this ra rather thin, a rather thin base coat. And you hear the scratchy, that's the panel scratching around. I'm doing a base coat just because I normally always do a base coat. And I want to, I don't want to uh, experiment and then have a big clunker because I didn't do what I normally do. So, but also maybe show you another way of kind of adding like a um, kind of a, a semi base coat, kind of the like flow extender way. That's a very popular way. And this is looking good. So that's it for the base coat. I might torch this a hair just for air bubbles. Maybe I'll get rid of a little bit of this. So that's a, you know, just a gray, ugly base coat. There's nothing fancy about it. But none of that will really show, usually, unless I have, unless I leave like a, you know, a negative space, which could happen. You never know. Okay, so I'm going to, so I just basically torch just to pop any air bubbles. I've got a few air bubbles here. So I want to kind of pop those. Just like that. That's good. Now I need my little tool. So these come in super handy. Um, these chopper things, these like a kitchen chopper. You can get these for a buck at like the dollar store. I find them, uh, they come in very handy. And I have about like a dozen of them because I, <laughs> I bought them for, you know, a lot for classes. So I've got a ton of choppers. This is kind of my lucky chopper though. It's the one I use the most. So let's bring the big old cup back. And the way I like to flip, when you're working with this much paint, it can be a little tricky to just do the old fashioned flip it over on the uh, canvas. I mean, there's a lot of paint in there. Things can go badly. So I use, I use the chopper and put the chopper on the cup and I flip it over. And then I get, I take the cup very close to the canvas and then just slide out the chopper and then just drop the cup down. And I'm just wiping off my little chopper quickly. And put that away. So now we've got a big old cup of paint. Let me move this, we can see. And it's time to flip it over. Let me move some of these out of the way. Okay, that's that's pretty good. So I'm gonna, um, I like to make, to kind of move my cup a little bit and then I pull it back uh, this way. I don't like to pull it straight up. Um, so I'm gonna, I, I'll basically tilt it, tilt it back like that. And that we, there we go. And I'm gonna, it's wanting to run to the edge. So I'm gonna kind of tilt it towards me. We got a lot of blue in that one. So I kind of like, I let the paint kind of come out of the cup into the corner. And I, I like to let the cup do some interesting shapes like this. Um, you see, I have kind of, I've tapped it out, but it does some interesting shapes. 
that can be kind of fun when we're tilting. Um, it can leave some very interesting uh, marks and effects because it likes to kind of stretch out. So this is something you can do. Um, it's not, not necessarily that we're going to keep any of these things, but you know, you can kind of let the paint seep out. We're pretty much done with the, the cup now. Just tap, see if I can get any more paint out on these corners. Also, if you do this on the corners, um, sometimes you don't want to keep stretching and tilting your cup, but these things on the corners will be stretching and doing interesting things. They can kind of save a corner and you don't have to tilt off of the corner. It's just, you know, it doesn't always happen. You know, it's just a precaution. It's like an insurance policy. But look at the gold. The gold is uh, doing some interesting things. And so now is the time to start tilting a bit. Now I'm gonna uh, stretch out the paint. I normally, is my normal routine, is my stretching or my tilting system. I like to stretch the paint puddle. And this one, I don't have to stretch a whole lot. Um, oh, I also sh told you I was gonna show you another thing you could do. So if I take, um, if I take, do I have any black left? Maybe we have a, a black. So like some people use the flow, ex uh, use paint to make a flow extender. So they'll run it around kind of the outside of the paint puddle like that. I don't have a lot of paint in there, but <clears throat> that can help then with the tilting. In, in lieu or instead of a base coat, you could do it this way. And if I was to do that, I'd kind of do it all around the paint puddle, but you could take like the other colors I have and run that around. And then that's, you know, a, a kind of, uh, it's similar to a base coat, but not quite the same, but, um, so there we go. So I'm going to stretch. Now that's all going to leave you pretty much all that stuff I just put on there. I'm, I'm just going to stretch out the puddle a little bit more. Kind of like that. And one thing that I don't like right away, and it, there's nothing I can do about it, is all are black. We have this awesome band of black here. But um, I, I doubt we'll be able to keep all of that because it's all on the edges. So one thing we could try to do, and I'm just speaking out loud because these are the things that I'm thinking about when I'm uh, assessing the painting, is we could do a, you know, a flip and like a, a lip drag through this, but it's so pretty. I don't want to wreck it because look at this. The gold is amazing. We've got all these amazing things. So I don't want to do, I don't want to wreck it with um, like pulling anything through there. So I'm just going to try to save as much as I can. We won't be able to save it all. Um, like this, you know, everything around the edges is probably going to uh, get tilted off, most of it. But we'll see what we can do to save. I love what's happening right here. This I might try to save, this corner. So let's just see what, what happens. I think I'm going to take this corner off first. So in order to do that, I'm going to turn the panel and then tilt towards me. Right here, this is pretty incredible, all this stuff. Um, so let's see what happens. So I'm going to tilt. I'm going to take it kind of slow. And I like to tilt rather slowly. So I love what's happening there. But I'm going to try to save as much as I can. So there we go. We got covered that corner. Tilting it back. Um, now this, I really like what's happening there. I'm going to try to, and I, I'm not going to take it over that corner. I'm just going to see if I can move some, some paint over there a little bit more. But no, I don't really want to do that. I want to leave that alone. So now, okay, I'm going to turn it. So we've got 
like it's this is kind of a weird it's a weird flip cup you never know what's going to happen you know they're the most unpredictable pours in my opinion but we've got all the craziness here which i like i think i'm going to take this corner off next um so and that gold is kind of like right in a kind of a weird spot right up in the middle there but some of that is going to leave but as we tilt off other things are going to start popping up okay so i'm over that corner i'm going to tilt back now so now i'm going to go over to this corner And I think I'm going to probably tilt all this stuff off of this corner. It's very interesting, but it's there's it's too busy for that corner because we don't want a whole a lot of busy stuff in the corners. So I'm going to say goodbye to that. And now We've got all this gold in a weird spot. So I'm going to tilt this down. And well, I'm not I'm I'm not too happy. With what's happening. So this I'm going to tilt off this uh, edge because I have to tilt paint off somewhere because we just have too much paint on the uh, canvas or uh, the panel so something's got to go so it's just a question of what do we want to get rid of And I'm going to go a little more because now we're stretching out all of the gold. Now it's starting to look a little uh, more interesting to me. Okay, so that's, let me tilt this way a little. So we got some crazy cells happening. But so now it's more interesting than it was because all that gold was on like one side and then we had all that blue and we had black here and we had black here and I didn't like that at all. Um, so now we have this big black uh, area here, which um, I don't love the shape of it. It's a little too, um, you know, a little too diagonal, but I kind of like what's happening in it. So I have to decide. Uh, what's next, if anything? I think I want to tilt a little more of this off here. So I'll try to do that. Now this is the, you know, this at this stage, we're just adjusting and making kind of smaller changes. Um, you can't really do a lot of big changes at, at this stage. But I want to kind of bring that gold and bring things down to this corner a little bit more. So I'm just letting the paint kind of move and, and do its thing. So I like that better. We kind of brought um, these gold cells. They were kind of funky looking, but I kind of like them. They're very interesting. 
Let me wipe my hands. I'll show you. Um, so these cells right here, um, these ones that were kind of in the middle of our of our composition, they're now over on this side, and they're kind of, they're they're really crazy looking. But I like that because they kind of blend into the rest of the oh into into the rest of the composition. I got a drop, but that's okay. You got to be careful when you're pointing stuff out in your paintings so you don't get drips <laughs> from your hands. Uh, but uh, anyway, okay. So I think I, let me turn it around again. So it's a, it's a crazy, it's a crazy flip cup. Um, I like parts of it a lot. It's not, I, you know, it's, uh, very cool. The gold, of course, it, it, it did take over. That is the, um, extreme sheen. So, but I mean, it's a, it's a wild abstract, uh, painting for sure. I think I'm going to call that one good. I, I like, um, I like a lot of it. I'm going to show you kind of what I like. I'll wipe my hands off better this time. So, but at, you know, and, and at a certain stage, if you're thinking about like, what can I do um, to change it? You know, it's best to, you know, cause you can only, at a certain point, you can only get worse, you know? It's hard to, if you, if you like something or like a lot of parts, and there are small areas you don't like, it's, um, it's never a great idea to sacrifice the whole for like a, the small thing, like a really small little thing you don't like. So you kind of, it's a balancing act of um, what to keep, what to get rid of and what to try to change. Um, but what I like a lot, I mean, I like this, this is a crazy uh, huge area right here, this big crazy shape. Uh, but I like how it kind of splinters off into these smaller shapes that take your takes your eye off the canvas. And I love the, the blue field that this is surrounding right here. And I, but I love this diagonal, um, the diagonal composition going off of the canvas this way, and it ties right into the black. So I like that a lot. This is kind of a crazy, uh, we've got a lot of interesting little, like kind of, kind of lacing. It's not r like real lacing. Um, it kind of wants to pop through, but it's not going to, quite get there. Um, but it's a very cool, like a textured look. So, you know, the paint can do, can create texture on its own. And, you know, in my opinion, that's texture right there. And that might develop a little bit more, but probably not. So I think I'm going to call that one good. I like a lot of it. Um, and of course, you know, expectations, if you want to try to like recreate something, it's never going to happen. So, but uh, expectations were just to make um, a crazy looking flip cup, which I think we did with this kind of similar colors as that last uh, flip cup. So, but, um, so I like, I'm going to leave it alone. I like a lot of parts of it. And um, so let me, let me flip over and see if there's any uh, questions. I see some comments. And okay, let me flip back. All right, hello. Um, I'm gonna just scroll up here and see if there's any questions that came in. And Angela's seeing animals again. I don't know how she sees them, <laughs> but they're there. Oh my gosh. Uh, sheep. So, okay. I'm just checking to see if there's any um, questions about what we just did. Um, thanks for the great comments, though. I appreciate that a lot.
cool. So I don't see any um, questions. Great comments, though. Appreciate that. Um, and Onavala asks, um, do you ever scrape unattractive portions? Uh, nor well, in, for some techniques, I would. Um, like the Dutch pour, it, you know, it depends on the technique because uh, certain techniques are easier to, to fix kind of than others. Um, if I was to scrape something off of this, uh, like flip cups, I mean, flip cups are very organic and, you know, it's kind of a one shot deal. Um, if I was to scrape something off, you have to add something else. So you could try to add another flip cup, but then you have to also tilt that. And in tilting that you're, you know, you know, changing the entire painting. Um, and I've tried, I've tried modifying lots of different things. I found for me, it's, it's not been successful, at least to um, what I would consider like what I like, like uh, Dutch pours. Uh, it's a different story because that way, because you can add paints and you're very precise about where you're adding paints. Um, other things like if it was a, like a landscape pour, for instance, with that, you're adding a lot of different layers, uh, like ribbons of color. You might be adding multiple flip cups. Um, so you're doing a lot of different uh, techniques and different layers. That is a much easier technique, uh, in my opinion, to, to scrape, alter, change, because it's just a, you're just changing the whole thing all the time. Um, something like a flip cup, you know, for me, I just, you know, you kind of get what you get and then you try to make the best of it. Um, and, you know, sometimes they work great. Sometimes they don't look great. Um, so my philosophy is uh, try to make the best painting you can. Um, you know, and this is talking about the flip cup. Uh, and if you don't like it, just scrape the whole thing, you know, because um, not all of them work. But at least I've found that, um, you know, if I try to change something on a technique like a ring pour or flip cup, um, because those things, you know, they are, they're not easy to change. And if you try to change it, um, it looks off. It just doesn't look like it was a part of the original flip cup, if that makes any sense. You could always try to do, um, now, now I have done, um, I have done things with flip cups and, um, where I've, I've layered another cup and I've poured ribbons on top and I've, I've tilted that and those can be successful. So that is, you know, I'm not scraping off anything though. I'm just adding stuff. So, but that could work now because I've done that uh, many times, um, but I was focused on like scraping, but you could always add something somewhat similar to like a, like a ribbon. So let's say on the, uh, let me flip back real quick. So right up here on the, on the black area, maybe that would be a, an interesting experiment. So up in the black area, I mean, it's so black and that just, it's the darkest part of the painting. It draws your eye. Um, I kind of like it just because it's uh, such a juxtaposition. But if you didn't like that, you could layer a cup, like, uh, like a ribbon. You could just layer your, you know, your, the flip cup again. And you could just pour a ribbon right over that and then tilt it some more and um, see what happens. Why don't we try it? I think we should try it. So, so this is, it's not actually scraping off. We're just going to be adding, adding two. So I'm going to add a little bit of white. I'm holding my cup here. Maybe a little bit of the pearl. Put some more of the, I'm kind of layering it the same. Maybe some of the blue. And I don't want to add um, like the red. I want to keep this, I want to keep the red like in the center in the center of the painting. So I don't want to add any more red. But I'll add some of the purple. And the gold will probably take over everything. So I don't have much black. I would like to add some black though. Let me see if I can scrape some out. Let 
and what do we have in here? We got that interesting purple. That's not really in the painting. I don't want to use that. Put a little more of this blue in. And what else? I think that might be maybe a touch of silver. Okay. So now to do this, now this, this is a, there's no guarantees with this technique. Um, so this is kind of, you know, in my opinion, if you like most of the painting, this is a risky, a risky thing, but we're going to try it. Why not? So I'm going to pour, and I'm going to pour kind of from high off the canvas. I didn't like that. So we got a lot of white in there. We don't have a lot of blue in there. But let's see what happens. So now we've got to modify that. So I'm going to just tilt it kind of back and forth. And see, the paint does not want to, it doesn't like to blend with the paint that's already on the, the canvas. So you're always going to kind of have that line there. But we had that line anyway with the, um, the black. So that doesn't really bother me too much. So I'm going to tilt this off so that we're going to make this more of a light corner now instead of a, a black corner. So I like this right there. So, and I'm also watching, you know, the rest of the painting to make sure things don't get all crazy. So just like that, we have altered it quite a bit. Now I'm going to try to see if I can get rid of that one cell that's all kind of crazy there. It's like a... It's wanting to leave. Okay, so that's I'm just kind of moving it around a little bit. So we could kind of play with that if you wanted to a little bit more. But see, at some point, things are going to start shifting in the rest of the painting. When you have new paint, the thicker paint on top of the, uh, the thinner paint, the, the thicker paint likes to move more than the thinner paint. But uh, I think we created something very cool there. Um, let me flip this around. I just want to try to move this back up a little bit. I certainly like that a whole lot better than the uh, the big black corner. So I'm just tilting this a little more. I want to try to take uh, a little bit of this off. And again, I'm, I don't want to wreck the thing just for that. There we go. Okay. Well, that I think helped. Um, I like that better than the uh, than the the big black corner. It doesn't look. It looks a little different. I mean, it is different than the rest. Um, but it kind of blends in a little bit. I think it kind of goes with the painting. The this does not as much. The uh, the aqua green kind of sticks out. But um, but we have hints of that 
here. You know, there are hints of the aqua green in other areas. So it kind of, it kind of blends in. So, well, that was a great, that was a good experiment. I'm glad we tried it. Um, so it's a funky painting. It's a weird one, but um, so any other questions? Red is weird. See me doesn't like the red. That's okay. I mean, there's a lot of stuff in this this painting. Um, there's a lot of different colors, but I kind of I like the I like the way it's you know the red and the blue um, they kind of balance each other in in my opinion. But uh, so Angela sees. A dragon now? Well, that's my, that's what I'm talking about, Angela. Dragons. So, sheeps are great. Bunnies are nice. Dragons are where it's at. <laughs> so, uh, so any other uh, questions? Too much white? Oh, there's, there's a lot of white. There's a lot of white in the corner now. A landscape pour. Sure, I will do a landscape pour. Um, landscape pours are, are fun. Uh, I like to do them. You have a little more, I wouldn't say total control, but you can have a lot more creativity. And uh, um, you can kind of choose, you have, you have a little, well, you'll have more control actually. I guess that's what I'm trying to say uh, with how the composition looks. Um, so it's um, it's not like the flip cup. This is like you know whatever comes out, we never know. Um, we can't really control it. That's part of the fun, in my opinion. But um, but it, you know that's one technique. The the landscape pour is uh, and you can. There's many many ways to do it. I like to add. I like to combine several different techniques in landscape pours. You can get some really cool, very interesting paintings. Um, so Judith likes parts of it. Thanks, Judith. Appreciate that. Um, let's see. I'm looking for... Yeah, and Annette mentioned scraping also. I missed that earlier. Scraping like parts you don't like. Um, yes, in certain techniques, I definitely do that. So let's see. <laughs> cool. Um, so JC can't get the, the hang of a landscape pour yet. Yeah, they're, they're. I mean, they're not. They're not like. Uh, it's not like a one technique, and it's like, oh, that's it. You know, there's. Um, you have to combine a lot of different things. Um, so what I do, just briefly, uh, I like to combine uh, flip cups, or. I um, see what I'm thinking about. I like to combine like flip cups, ribbons, puddle pours, or direct pours, I should say, string pulls, um, reverse swipes, knife swipes. There's a lot of different things you can throw into a landscape pour. You don't have to use all those techniques at once, um, but there's a lot of cool things you can do with landscape pour. Um, so those are, yeah, those are really fun. So let's see, I got a bunch of paint down here, <laughs> but um, I gotta bring my next box over. So anyway, but that was the, that was the flip cup. I hope you uh, enjoyed it. It was fun to do. Uh, most of these paints were you know, leftover paints that I had from previous demos that I did. So I just thought it'd be fun to throw a bunch of different colors in and uh, see what happened. And, um, but um, I want to point out again from some of you have seen this already, but I have this big list of names behind me. These are all of my founding members uh, for my brand new um, 
a pouring membership, a paint pouring membership. And uh, I'm going to bring something up. And if you are interested in that, um, I talked about it a lot last night. I had a big, um, where am I going here? I had a great big reveal and I talked about the membership and um, it's, uh, you could find it here if you want to read about it, uh, acrylicpouringacademy.com forward slash studio. It's called uh, The Pouring Studio and it's a membership slash community. So we're going to be meeting uh, every month, uh, like usually once a week or more and doing uh, one technique a month that we're going to focus on. There's going to be a color theme uh, for the month. Um, every, and every month will be a different technique. We're going to have uh, studio chats is what I call them, which are other kind of other lessons about color theory, composition, um, maybe product demos, other tips and tricks, uh, things that don't, you know, not, not exactly pouring related, but all of these things tie into pouring. And, uh, and everything will tie into something I've created, a special tool called um, the Acrylic Pouring Success Path which will help you make progress in your pouring journey. No matter where you're starting, if you're just starting from scratch, um, I'll have a list of things for you to focus on. And if you have more experience, I have another uh, uh, stage for you of things to focus on and progress. So it's all, uh, everything we're gonna be talking about will tie into the success path in some way. Um, so it's an ongoing membership. Um, I, I think it's going to be amazing. Uh, the founding, this is the founding member launch right now. Uh, it's open right now. It's gonna close on Wednesday. Um, but if you would like to join now and become a founding member, uh, it's $19 a month, which is the cheapest that the uh, membership will ever be offered at. It's kind of a special price just because um, I'm gonna rely on you and kind of to help me make this membership kind of the best it can be. And uh, there are some, um, there are a bunch of lessons in there right now, if you to go through, there's a whole section on supplies and paints and things like that. Um, I have a lot of handouts in there, conversion charts. Um, I have my, of course, my cheat sheet is in there, my journal page is in there. Um, and then I also have my uh, pouring, my paint mixing system is in there, which is, um, probably my most in, most important thing to my painting. Uh, it just helps me make my paint or mix my paint uh, to with the exact same right consistencies every single time, um, very quickly. And I have a lot of, I, it's a three-step system, but I have a lot of videos in that section. So I have a lot of demonstrations and examples and things like that. Um, but uh, if that interests you at all, um, let me, Actually, I'll just do this quickly. Excuse me for just a second. So if that is at all interesting to you, uh, I'll put the, um, the link in the uh, chat. You could go check it out. You go to the sign up page. I have information on the on the sign-up page for you to read through if you want to, um, but uh, a lot of a lot of people. I have a lot of members watching right now, so they've heard this before. But I appreciate them uh, listening again. But um, I think it's going to be a, a really fun membership. Um, we're going to work on a lot of different things. And if you're struggling with your paint pouring or you want to learn specific things. Um, I think it would be a great uh, membership for you to be a part of. I, I'm really excited about the community aspect of it because um, we're all going to have, you know, we're all kind of doing the same thing. We have a kind of a plan we're going to be following. Um, and of course, you don't, you can be anywhere on your, on your journey. You don't have to be at a certain stage or level. You could be brand new or you could be more experienced. It's um, everyone is welcome. But I think we're all going to learn a whole lot together. And uh, I'll be demonstrating different techniques. And I'm always experimenting and learning new techniques. So I'll, I'll basically be an open book and, and share everything that I know about paint pouring in that membership with you. So, um, but that is it there. If you wanted to go take a look at it, 
Um, that would be awesome. And I'm going to be talking about this more this weekend and into next week. So uh, I might pop into the Facebook groups um, to do some lives, just, hey, how's it going? Just some spontaneous live videos. Um, so you could look for those maybe. Uh, I will probably do some posts and things like that. So, but this is the weekend of talking about the uh, brand new uh, pouring membership, which I am uh, super excited about. So, but if you have any questions, throw them in the uh, chat. Um, I'd be happy to answer them. Or if not, I hope you have a wonderful weekend and we can, um, and I will be seeing you, um, seeing you this weekend, hopefully. So I don't see any, uh, I don't see any questions at the moment, but, uh, so this was kind of a fun flip cup. It was a, it's a crazy one. They're always kind of crazy, but um, they're fun to do. And um, I'm glad he could come and join me. So if there's no other questions, I will, uh, again, wish you a wonderful well, weekend. I hope you have a great weekend. I'll be uh, around and popping in to the Facebook group, and I'll be on my Facebook page and probably doing some lives and things like that. So uh, maybe sharing a few other different things. So um, I will see you uh, very soon. And uh, thanks so much for, for joining me. And um, uh, if you have any questions, uh, I will. Um, you could always email me about um, the membership or anything else. Let me throw that up real quick, just as we go here. Uh, where's my email? Here we go. So if you have any questions, uh, f feel free to email me at uh, brad at acrylic uh, pouring academy .com, and I'll be happy to answer your questions or get back to you as soon as I can. And uh, and uh, Judith asks if there is an easy way to go back and watch the first 10 minutes. Yes. Um, when I'm done here, when we stop the broadcast, give it about 10 minutes or 15 minutes and the replay of this video will show up in YouTube. So you'll, you can be able to check it in my YouTube channel. So um, look for that in there, Judith. So, well, thank you everyone for uh, stopping by watching a flip cup. It was a fun one. Uh, we did a little crazy thing at the end there, which I kind of like, but um, it, was, it was great. So I will see you uh, this weekend, hopefully. Take care and I will uh, talk to you very soon. Bye-bye.